All right. So I'll just show you a new addition to the boat. We've got these. So one end is the Shimano deep drop cord. Can you see that? And then this end is another waterproof end, right? Water sealed, O-ring. And you've got two, two terminals there that are good for, I can't remember how many amps, but more enough for a, uh, for a deep drop reel anyway. And then these, right? So come over here. So these are connected to my starter battery. I know that some people say that you can't, you shouldn't use your starter battery, but if you leave your motor on all day like I do, then um, from everything that I've seen and all the auto sparkies I've talked to, then that's perfectly fine. Basically, you just unscrew this cap, that's waterproof, there's an O-ring in there. And then this end, you can't get it wrong because one pin's bigger than the other. You plug that in like that, and then again, screw this in, and it's now watertight. So you, this can get splashed all day, and it will never get any corrosion or salt buildup or anything like that. The connection will stay good. I've just got this end, I've put some um, dielectric grease in there as well, and then this just plugs straight back into the your electric reel like you would think, and you're good to go all day. I've got, so the two ports here, and I've also got another port over there. That, <laughs> Chicken. Because they're 12, because they're 12 volt, that will also do the fridge. So the idea, film me for a sec. So the idea with that one is you plug your 12 volt fridge in there, and you can just have it on the back of the deck here where it's not getting too wet. There's also a third lithium battery in the deck, uh, in the cabin. Film me. There's also a third lithium battery in the cabin, and that's got another port on it that you can plug your fridge into as well, as well as your phone and other things like that. So. They're the new things, and sorry, there is one more as well over here. This is an input, so same connection, but this is an in, so that you can plug, so that you can plug your solar panel in. You can just throw it on the roof, tie it down, and hook it into there, and then you're gonna have power for days. Hooking up with your lithium, it ends up going to your battery. It's got a separate isolator there, so if something ever happens and you drain your batteries at the back, you got a third lithium. It's always gonna be powered by, by the sun. Nothing can go wrong. We'll try not to. Next thing is the beach launching side of it. So again, I love my beach launching and a lot of what I do with the trailer is to make that easier. So there's a few things that we've done. <clears throat> One is this boat catch. These things are worth their weight in gold. They really minimize how long you're in the water standing there and that's the biggest killer in beach retrievals. The, the shorter the amount of time that you're staying still in the water, the more likely you are to get out without getting stuck. So they're pretty straightforward. You just push this tab. That now has released this pin in here, so that's free. So once I bump, the, bump it off, it'll get thrown off. Um, you can pull this pin free by pulling this cord, which is on the, which can get led up to the um, person that's on the boat at the time, but we don't really use it. We just so this screwdriver, is that's the pin there. You can see it, in and out like that. If I just simulate us going in, it would get clipped by that big eye, and now it's free. And then it would lock itself in, right? So as soon as this big eye goes past it and clips that big pin, it'll release the latch, and as soon as the eye goes past it, it'll shoot across and lock it in, and it is heavy duty as. So just undo it again. So that's free. Yep. Boat goes past it. Easy as that. Easy as that. Okay. This big V, if your boat comes on straight, which it should anyway, doesn't you don't really need these, but they do just give you a bit more allowance if you do if you're a bit deep in the water or a wave rides you in, your bow doesn't have to hit perfectly straight and it will bump you back to straight. Okay, next on the beach launching. It's one thing retrieving the boat. Sometimes the hardest part is to actually get the boat off and into the water. And if you need quite large tires on your trailer to be able to get to the places that you wanna go, that means that your trailer is now gonna to have to be extra deep to get the boat floating and off the trailer, which means your car is also gonna to have to be further back into the water. So, to compromise that, when you're bumping them off, 
you want your tray, you want your you want your drawbar as long as it can. <coughs> this is why you get the CSD designs. CSD designs. Thank you, draw. To get these uh, extended drawbars. So basically, as you can see, it's just got a big pivot point here. Super strong, like all the drawers work. This will swing up, swing around, and then it, you can hook onto it with your um, tow ball. And it has a second support. TIG welded stainless steel, nice bracket. Pete's, Pete's design has got a little bit of something extra and it's actually got something that I want to do on mine as well. My drawer also, it's got a uh, telescopic tube here. So this actually will extend even more, <coughs> which will give you more length again. All on what, HDPE slides, so any sand and grit goes in between those slides so you can have a jam up with sand as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's the launching part of it. Now for the retrieval. The retrieval is probably the hardest part. Yeah, stay on that side. Basically, you want the trailer to be all the way back in the water, but it's not as simple as just driving it in with the extension bar, one, because your car's gonna spend so long in the salt water. Two, it will even the smallest amount of surge will take away some ruts in your wheels and it will end up sinking in just a little bit. And as soon as you connect up and, and say go, the littlest rut, even when you do the old trick of reversing back and then forward, can sometimes be too much to get out. And it's just too high risk because if, you, if you're the only car there, which a lot of the time we are, you've got nowhere to go from there. It's too hard to push the boat back off. You've got to try and disconnect the trailer, go out, do it again. So it's just, it's just too risky for us. What we do is completely disconnect the trailer on what a lot of people have, which is the fifth wheel or the recovery wheel. Basically, it's got a pin here that comes out. You lift this, it'll pull out, swing around, and then this will drop be on the floor. And the trailer is, is rotating on this. It's also, got this. it's also got the benefit of having a spare bearing in there so that if you do lose one on the trailer, you know that one's good to go as well. Basically, you just drop this in. The, tro the boat's not gonna be on there, so you can just push it right back into the water. The, the main trick with that one is never do it on a flat and never do it in the water at all because, again, the little ruts might only be small, but they're really hard to push a trailer by yourself. It's quite heavy, even without a boat on it. So make sure you're on a little bit of a slant and just put a little bit of sand at the back of your wheels to chock it. Then when you're ready, have your snatchy set up, push it in, um, and then you just pull it out with the with the car there, which I'll show you as a separate video on. All right, so that's the retrieval. What else have we got? The uh, the new winch. The new winch. <sighs> oh yep. This is a new anchor winch. This is mixed winches. It's supposed to be pretty damn good. We've got the sock on there. Um, for more reports, they're pretty good winches. I hear that the parts that he uses are a lot more robust. I don't know, I'll have to test it out in the field, but so far it's been really good. Great warranty. Um, yeah, local South Australia company, mate. You should like him. Mm. And we've got a pretty clever idea on other uses for it, which we might have to experiment uh, with today, tomorrow. As most people that have these know, you do have the risk of these flying up too quick and going out onto your, the front of your boat there. So it looks solid. Yeah, we've got this here um, that'll protect that so that it'll always go into that hole or at least bang it and not go forwards. Yeah. All right, next one. I'm gonna show you how to open a boot. Come over here. So when you get 35s on your cruiser and you are too stingy to get the real weird carrier that carries both of them, it's actually too wide to open the barn door. The barn door will hit it. So you have to have a little contraption to get around that. When you get enough dust in there, you have to give it a few opens. Now it's good. It's this wheel here. So you tie onto the latch, a bit of old cord. And then if you do run out of cord, you've got some spare here if you ever need some, some wire cable. And then you give it a pull. There you go, open. Always only open it a little bit first because something normally falls out as you're doing it like that so it's caught now right open it up catch what's fallen out these are also very good camping very good for spraying 
Oh. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> yes. And there you go. That's how you open a boot. So let's just zoom up on the contraption that you're tied to. And there you go. Oh, I just got some detergent up my nose now. <laughs> Sniff back. So that will probably do. We're about to lose light, and we might do a part two tomorrow. Thanks for coming. So these scuppers have been an absolute game changer. If you use normal scuppers, when you've got them closed, you get some water on the deck, you want the water to go out, you've got to go and open them up, which is not that easy. Uh, and then when you are reversing, if you do leave them open, if you are reversing like I do to hold on to a spot, and we do, then you'll get water rushing in the back. Even when they are closed, they do tend to leak after not too long anyway. You're forever changing seals and stuff like that. These ones are just a one-way valve. They're always in this position. You get any water on the deck, you cop the big splash coming over, it's straight out the back when you're driving. And when you reverse, there's no way that the water can get through this flat because it's so floppy, it's fire hose, you know? It just, it can't make its way in. We stayed completely dry on that deck at, at all, all day. I've never had that on this boat, even when the scuppers were brand new and sealed. And yeah, every wave that came over and we had a big splash, it was just straight out the back as you're driving.